So, a while back, I asked you all what your Pokemon headcanons were. And by a while back, I mean five months ago. Yeah, it's been a while, but I'm back and hopefully I'll get back to the usual flow of videos, which is usually just a brief period of being energized and then procrastinating for a few months. But I'll get better at it, I swear. I got a lot more responses than I was expecting, and some of them are actually pretty funny. I should probably explain what a headcanon is before we dive any further into the video. A headcanon is when someone invents a piece of fan canon they believe in. It may not be accepted throughout the fanbase, but it stays tucked away inside its creator's brain, thus becoming their personal headcanon. Well, to start off, we should probably start with yours truly. I don't have any. Okay, well if I had to answer, it would probably be that in the Pokemon games where you get to choose your character's gender, you're actually choosing between two siblings, a brother and a sister. Or maybe like two alternative timelines where one is born male and the other is born female. Either one's fine with me. But this video isn't about my headcanons, it's about yours. Popscotch says, I've always enjoyed the headcanon that the reason the Pokedex has some batshit insane entries is because most of them are written by children. On top of being hilarious, it scarily makes a lot of sense. There's a lot of Pokedex entries that literally defy all logic. Like for instance, Macargo! Macargo's Pokedex entry in Pokemon Sapphire states, Macargo's body temperature is approximately 18,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Water is vaporized on contact. If this Pokemon is caught in the rain, the raindrops instantly turn into steam, cloaking the area in a thick fog. I think a lot more than just water would vaporize. Hell, it doesn't even gotta make contact with it to vaporize. Our sun is 9,941 degrees Fahrenheit, but apparently Macargo is twice as hot as the sun, sitting at a whopping 18,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Jimothy, I thought I told you to stay away from the Pokedex entries. Oh, what, next you're gonna tell me that Ponyta is capable of jumping over the Eiffel Tower in a single giant leap, and that its hooves are ten times harder than diamonds? Jimothy, you son of a bitch! I'm sure we all knew that kid on the playground that said the most outrageous things. And that kid just so happens to be responsible for writing Pokedex entries. Oh no. Well, I mean, I'm not sure what the professors were expecting. They literally send children to fill out an encyclopedia for pocket monsters. Bryce Pruitt says, My favorite headcanon is the one positioned right above Mega Blastoise's head. <laughs> Joking aside, my favorite headcanon is that when it comes to other people in the Pokemon world, the player is seeing what the protagonist remembers. That's why trainer classes all appear to be clones of one another. The protagonist is just remembering one face and attributing their looks to all other similar trainers. This also may explain why people may repeat the same thing over and over again if you keep trying to talk to them. The protagonist can really only remember one or two things per person, which causes the person to repeat themselves. This blew my mind when I first read it. How have I never thought of this before? It explains a lot of the weird little things in the Pokemon games. Even if I don't believe it to be true, it's really cool to think about. I can already hear some keyboard warriors rushing to the comments saying, It's a game! Of course they say the same thing over and over again. And to that I say, shut up. Sadly, I read every comment eventually. Sometimes it takes me a while, okay? I'm a person too. I have things to do. Like read comments on YouTube. Giovanni Johnson says, Pokeballs are amazing environments for the Pokemon, like rest spots or apartments instead of them just becoming data. It helps me sleep at night when I play the game. Yeah, hopefully Pokeballs don't just keep Pokemon in some sort of weird void for all eternity. That sounds incredibly horrifying. I've always wondered though, what is inside a Pokeball? There's like mirrors inside of it or something. And when a Pokemon returns to its Pokeball, it turns into light, so maybe it's like some sort of light container? Or maybe they do get digitized. Who knows? Piranha Lettuce says, A headcanon I have is that Missing No is a corrupted version of Porygon. Maybe Missing No was an unfinished version of Porygon 2 or Porygon Z. That would explain why it looks glitchy and unfinished. I like this one, but I'm pretty sure Porygon Z is the corrupted version of Porygon. Maybe instead of Missing No being a corrupted version of it, maybe a prototype of Porygon would be more fitting. Or maybe a failed experiment, kinda like how Ditto is a failed clone of Mew. Which, granted, isn't technically canon, but it might as well be with so much evidence lying around. Dilo says, I like to headcanon that sometimes when Leon gets lost, he's actually trying to get away from his responsibilities as champion and have some time to himself, since stuff like Pokemon Twilight Wings and even Leon's rare league card in the game imply that he wasn't as happy being champion as he appeared to be. I like this one, not only because it adds more depth to Leon's character, but because this is the type of thing I would do. I'm lazy, alright? I'll procrastinate for as long as I need to. I haven't actually seen Pokemon Twilight Wings, surprisingly, and I'll get to it eventually. And about Leon's rare league card, 
I don't know. He doesn't really seem unhappy. He looks more accomplished, if anything. Little side tangent. When I first played through Sword, I was a little worried about fighting Leon. He was getting hyped up throughout the entire game and stole my thunder every chance he got. Once I did get to finally bite him, I kicked his ass. And if I remember correctly, he ended up using a move that dealt recoil damage and as a result, his Pokemon fainted. It was very sad. Fucking loser. BV Mannequin says, Pokeress is a microscopic Pokemon. It's so simple, but I love it so much. And honestly, a Pokemon based on Pokeress would be really cool. A friendly little virus Pokemon. Somebody please go make that and send it to me on Twitter. Bad Cowl says, I actually just realized this, but what if Arceus is a false god? I mean, you'd think the god of Pokemon would be really powerful, but he's actually really weak when you think about it. Sure, he has the ability to change his typings, but it's always seems strange that his own creations can defeat and catch him. It all just seems a bit suspicious, but what if Arceus also doesn't know that it's a false god? He's just a fake that the real god put in place as a disguise. This one is so out there that honestly it might be true. I mean, there's always been the argument about who made who. Did Arceus make Mew, or did Mew make Arceus? Maybe Mew is the rightful god of the Pokemon world. Mew just pretends like it's not so it can have time to itself. Sounds a little familiar. I haven't played Legends Arceus yet because I'm poor, but I know there's gotta be some heavy Arceus lore in that game. I mean, the game's called Legends Arceus after all. How much more blunt can you get? Also, before we move on to the next headcanon, I just want to say this because I know I'm going to get a ton of comments about it. Yes, I'm saying it right. It's Arceus, not Arceus. Every time I bring up Arceus in a video, little rats come out of their holes to tell me I'm wrong. But guess what? I'm not. The Pokemon company decided to change it to Arceus because the original pronunciation of Arceus sounded like Arse. And we can't have the Europeans giggling at the Pokemon God's name now, can we? Final Lugia Guardian says, My headcanon is that Gloria is a Scottish girl who is quick to anger and likely to swear. Yeah, I can definitely see this one. I remember when Sword and Shield was first revealed and everyone was making memes about Gloria being a drunk, rude Scottish girl. It was basically universally agreed upon that Gloria was meant to be Scottish. I mean, the Galar map matched the map of the United Kingdom almost perfectly. Postwick, the town you start off in, is exactly where Scotland is. So like, all the clues pointed to Gloria and Victor being Scottish. Then Pokemon Masters came and ruined it. Pokemon Masters features many of our beloved Pokemon trainers with proper voices. Which, side tangent, why is there any voice acting in Pokemon yet? I mean, it would not feel out of place whatsoever. The Pokemon anime has been around for around two decades already. You would think by now that they would at least try to integrate voice acting into Pokemon games. Even The Legend of Zelda has voice acting now. Anyways, back on topic. When we finally did get to hear Gloria, she sounded more British than Scottish. Hello! I'm Gloria. I'm from a small town in Gala called Postwit. Pleased to meet ya! See this bag? It's the very same one my mum used back in the day. I never go anywhere without it. I mean, at least she has an accent, but still. Scottish Gloria is gone. We were so close. Alright, Rate Dio decided to leave a list of headcanons, so I'll go ahead and tackle them one at a time. There are several of most legendaries, and the legends associated with them are just the results of ancient people fearing and worshipping them. Thinking about there being multiple of some legendaries kind of ruins their legendary status for me personally, though it does kind of make sense seeing as the Pokemon games all take place in the same world for the most part, and you usually get to see reoccurring legendaries. They also say, despite all this, Tobias has a fucking action replay. I don't care what you say, homie was cheating and you all know it! I like how even though in their headcanon it is completely plausible that Tobias could have gotten a dark ride, but they still refuse to believe it. And I'm 100% with them. Tobias is a dirty little cheater who robbed Ash's victory. Like, this fucking dude pulls out a dark ride out of nowhere. He defeats three of Ash's Pokemon, but luckily Sceptile comes in clutch. You're probably wondering, okay, he had a dark ride. At least it can't get any worse than this. Then, Tobias decides to pull out a fucking Latios. Like, what? It was basically game over after that. The last one they wrote is, Pokeballs were made not because people wanted to befriend them, but because they feared their power or wanted to control them. Again, I've yet to play Legends Arceus, unfortunately, but I remember in the reveal trailer, there was a guy who said Pokemon are terrifying creatures. I'm guessing they expand upon that more in the game, but at this point in time, I have no idea. Chances are, though, it's probably true. JoeyFuse174 says, The reason Oak caught, saved, and gave Pikachu to Ash is because he remembers meeting them as a kid in the Celebi movie. Ooh, a nice little time loop headcanon. These have always fascinated me because, like, when do they begin? Honestly though, if I were Oak, I would be too scared to do that. Cause like, he doesn't know where Ash got his Pikachu. I don't remember him explaining it to him. 
What if he gives him the wrong one? Timeline ruined. Or maybe he already did give him the wrong one, and the original loop Pikachu is gone forever. Lawrence says, My headcanon is that in gold and silver, the trainer only accepts phone numbers from girl trainers because he is a Chad. I agree, that is an absolute Chad move. This one's really funny to me though. Like, I just imagine his contacts being filled with girls and there's not one single guy there. What a player. If you have any headcanons of your own, go ahead and leave them in the comments and they might be featured in a part 2 of this video. Okay, go subscribe now, bye!